Let's get to Meg Terrell. She's got an update on the latest headlines about the pandemic. And Meg, what can you tell us this morning? Well, good morning, Becky. Yesterday, as you've been saying, marked a true turning point for the coronavirus response, both in the U.S. and on the international stage. The World Health Organization calling COVID-19 a pandemic for the first time, saying it's not just the disease's spread and severity that's concerning, but also alarming levels of inaction by some countries to address it. This morning, case numbers worldwide surpassing 126,000 and 4,600 people have died. In Europe, as the U.S. ban on travel begins tomorrow, Italy is still the world's hardest hit country country outside of China with more than 12,000 cases and 800 deaths. It's ordered almost all non-essential businesses to close. France and Spain each reporting more than 2,200 cases and Germany more than 2,000. In the UK, exempted from the travel ban, there are about 459 cases. In the U.S., cases are now surpassing 1,244 states. 37 people have died. Cities and states now making greater moves to try to slow the spread of the coronavirus. San Francisco banning gatherings of more than 1,000 people. Washington state of more than 250 people. Governor Jay Inslee asked what the penalties are for not abiding by the ban, saying this. The penalties are you might be killing your granddad if you don't do it. And I'm serious about this. Some very serious language there from Jay Inslee about the most vulnerable groups, guys. Nick, on that front, in terms of testing, what, what's the latest that you can give us just in terms of how many we've tested, how, how rapidly we'll be rolling out those tests? So we don't have a great national picture of how many we've tested. The CDC is reporting some of its own numbers, but that doesn't account for what we're getting from the academic labs and from the private companies. Now, Scott Gottlieb and AEI have been compiling data about the uh, nation's capacity to test, and as of yesterday, it was about 16,000 people a day. <laughs> uh, but Gottlieb also pointed out that the CDC uh, has changed regulations about how samples can be processed so that they can be combined for patients, potentially even doubling our capacity to test people. So that should help. The other problem we're hearing, though, is that even as testing capacity expands, it's spotty around the country. So not everywhere has as much as they need. And there was a hospital CEO on St. Joseph Health. Um, they treated the first patient in the United States. They were saying the number one thing they need is testing, testing, testing. So it certainly is not up to where it needs to be.